Hello there. So today I'm all dressed up because I'm going to be explaining muscles. I'm also three goats in one. The basketball goat, the football goat, and the teaching goat. Jokes aside, your body can perform quite a complex set of movements. But the ones we're going to focus on today are the ones that happen at joints. You know, joints, like the elbow, the joint in the leg is the knee. For the foot, the joint is the ankle. So your body performs two types of movements at joints, which are bending and extending. Or, in better terms, flexion, which is bending, and extension. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. In the leg, flexion, bending, extension. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. For the foot, flexion, be bringing your toes closer to your leg like this as if you're standing on your heels and extension would be extending your leg like this standing on your tiptoes so this is flexion extension flexion extension so just in case you weren't uh, paying attention you're just staring at my muscles let's uh, make sure that you understood what i said the basic movements across joints are flexion when you bend your appendage, your arm, your leg, or your foot, and extension, when you extend that appendage. So, this is extension, and this is flexion, and this is extension here of the leg, and flexion of the leg. Right, so now let's focus on the muscles which are performing these movements. So, one thing that you need to keep in mind, the muscle on the side of the movement is actually the one involved in performing it. So let's start with flexion first of all. When I'm talking about my arm, when I flex my arms like this, so I'm bending across this joint in this direction, the muscle involved in this movement should be the one on this side, so it's the biceps. So this muscle is actually the flexor muscle. For the leg, flexion is in this direction. So the muscle performing this movement is actually the one in the back, the hamstring, which is in this case the flexor muscle. Sometimes they call it the biceps femoris. So this muscle in the back is actually the flexor muscle. Now flexion in the foot, again, I'm bringing my toes closer to the leg. So the muscle performing the action is the one on this side, which is the flexor. In this case, it's called the tibialis anterior or the anterior tibialis. So this is the flexor muscle right here. You can actually sense and feel its contraction when you're bending your foot. Again, let's make sure that you got it. Flexors are the muscles responsible for flexion. So for the leg, the flexor is actually the one at the bottom here, the hamstring. When it contracts, it will become shorter and your leg will be pulled in this direction. So the leg will bend. So this way, flexion, flexion, and flexion. Now the same thing for your foot. The muscle performing the, the contraction or the, the activity or the function is in the front. The flexor is called the tibialis anterior. At the beginning here it's relaxed, it's longer and thinner. When it contracts, it will pull the foot upwards in this direction. So like so. And again, and again. Now returning to the arm. When I'm extending my arm, like so, so the movement is in this direction, backwards, the muscle involved should be the one in the back, which is this muscle, the triceps. So the triceps is actually the extensor muscle. The flexor is the biceps, which flexes the arm. The extensor is the triceps, which extends the arm. For the leg again, when I extend my leg, the direction of movement is to the front. So the muscle performing this movement is actually this one, the one in the front, the quadriceps. So this is the extensor. The one in the back is the flexor. The one in the front is the extensor. Flexion, extension. For the foot, again, extension would be in this way, as if you're standing on your tiptoes. So the muscle performing the action is the one in the back, on the side of the movement. So this is actually the extensor, the hibotic leisure, the duck of the leg, or we call it the triceps sura. So this is the extensor. All right, again, repeating the same idea, just to make it clear. So extensors are the muscles that are responsible for the extension of your leg, foot, or whatever. So for the leg, the extensor muscle is the quadriceps, located here. 
when this muscle contracts it will pull your leg upwards in this way and again and again for the foot the extensor muscle is the tricep sura a group of two muscles located here the minsamiya al -bata. of course it's not called the duck of the leg i was joking when it contracts the foot is extended in this way and again and again your muscles actually pass in two states they're either contracted or they're relaxed. When they're contracted, yani shaddin, they become shorter and thicker because they're pulling your body parts closer together. And when they're relaxed, they become what? Softer and longer. Now, remember, both the flexor and the extensor muscle pass through these two states. When I do my arm like this, the flexor is contracted, the extensor is relaxed. When I extend my arm, now the extensor is contracted, the flexor is relaxed. So don't confuse flexion with contraction and extension with relaxation. Both the flexor and the extensor can contract or relax, depending on the movement that you're doing, if you're flexing or extending. Okay, so now we establish that we have two types of muscles working across the joint and they actually have opposite functions we have the flexors which flex or bend your body parts your arms your legs or your feet and we have the extensors which extend so now let's think about the function or the status of each muscle during each movement so let's start with the arm again when i flex my arm obviously the flexor as we said the biceps is contracted what about the extensor, the opposite muscle, at this time? This one, the triceps. At this particular moment, the extensor should be inactivated. For what reason? Because if both muscles are pulling in their directions, my arm will st simply stick in the, in the middle. Or it will be like a tug of war. The one pulling the most will win. So when I want to flex, I'm letting the flexor win. And the extensor is being relaxed. When I'm doing the opposite, the opposite is actually happening. Now the extensor is contracted, the triceps in this case, and the flexor is relaxed. So these are called antagonistic muscles, meaning they work opposite to each other. When one contracts, the other relaxes. The same thing for the leg. When I flex my leg, the flexor is working. When I extend, the extensor is working. When I flex, the flexor has to contract. At the same time, the extensor has to relax. And when I extend, the opposite happens. The extensor contracts and the flexor relaxes. So they are antagonistic muscles also. For the foot now, the alternating movements would be flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. When I flex, the flexor muscle, the tibialis anterior contracts. At the same time, the extensor, the triceps sura, the batta is relaxed. When I extend my foot, the opposite happens. Now the extensor, the triceps sura is contracted, the flexor is relaxed. Again, antagonistic muscles. Okay, so the flexor and the extensor muscles qualify as antagonistic muscles, meaning that they have opposite functions, and when one is active or contracts, the other is relatively inactive or is relaxed. So let's take a closer look at that. Here in the leg, the antagonistic muscles, this is the flex, the extensor again, this is the flexor. When we extend our leg, the extensor is contracted, the flexor is relaxed. When we do the opposite, now the flexor is contracted and the extensor is relaxed. Again and again. They are working in opposite manners. And for the foot, the same idea. This is in the back the extensor, the triceps sura, and this is the flexor, the tibialis anterior. When we extend our foot, this is contracted, it becomes thicker and shorter. This is relaxed. When we do the opposite, what happened? Now this is contracted, the flexor is contracted, and the extensor is relaxed. So they are working opposite to each other. They are antagonistic muscles. This is a summary of uh, the movements in the leg and the foot. So we have in the leg, the extensor is the quadriceps, the flexor is the hamstring or the biceps femoris. During flexion, this is the movement here, 
the flexor is contracted whereas the extensor is relaxed whereas during extension the flexor is relaxed and the extensor is now contracted the same thing for the foot the extensor is the triceps sura in the back the flexor is the tibialis anterior in the front during flexion the flexor contracts the extensor relaxes and during extension the flexor is relaxed and the extensor is contracted study the activity of these muscles when we're working in alternating voluntary movements when i say voluntary movements meaning that i'm deciding to do them so i'm going to flex my arm then extend flex my arm and extend flexor is working now the extensor is working finally an application exercise so in your books they say using an exao uh, which is French for Experimentation Assisté par la Ordinateur or a Computer Assisted Experiment. computer. Blah blah blah. So they're saying we can simultaneously record the activity of both muscles of the leg, the triceps sura in the back, the extensor, and the tibialis anterior, this one here, the flexor, during alternative voluntary movements of flexion and extension of the foot. So the person here is moving his foot from flexion to extension in an alternating method and they are recording the activity of both muscles here um, the one on the top is for the triceps sura and on the bottom is for the tibialis anterior so your task is to show from the experiment that the triceps sura and the tibialis anterior are antagonistic that's all guys i hope you enjoyed the lesson and please subscribe